Curious Lloyd. You could say, Mother Nature seems to have it in for us. With earthquakes in California and Japan, hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico, tornadoes in the Midwest, and while natural disasters like those tend to come in waves, scientists say many are way overdue for a disastrous new sequel. San Francisco's Haywood Fault gets an earthquake every 140 years, but it's been 148 since the last one. San Francisco is way overdue for a major earthquake. FEMA and geologists alike are expecting it any day now apparently, but the science behind it checks out. San Francisco should be in ruins right about now. It all comes down to something called the Haywood Fault. Going back to the first Hayward earthquake recorded, from 1315, it's been found that the average time between big shakeups is 140 years. Since the last big Hayward rumble was in 1868, that means they are 8 years overdue for a new one. Every year that passes means the chance for a gigantic earthquake only increases. This means thousands of buildings destroyed, rampant looters, no water and thousands dead. But the most conservative reports estimate the damages to be $165 billion. Currently, an Oakland wrecking quake in the next 30 years is at 14.4%, but that's up from 13.2% only 7 years before, and it will keep going up. But for those of you visiting San Francisco in the near future, just bear this information in mind, because you never know what could happen. The southern US is long overdue for massive hurricanes. The American South is known for a lot of things. It's renowned for its beautiful scenery, which is replete with a stunning array of tropical rainforests, extremely arid deserts, vast water systems, spectacular beaches and majestic mountain ranges with their snow-capped peaks, and yes, hurricanes also. But as often as hurricanes like to gallivant around in the south, a huge number of southern cities have avoided being hit by a massive one in many, many decades. Statistically speaking, this could be terrifying for some. The odd northern city like Boston fits into this category, but when you move over to the south, a disturbing string of overdue cities become apparent. Somehow, the southern Georgia and northern Florida area has beaten the odds 92 times in a row and counting. In some cities, it's actually been more than a century without a significant hurricane touching down. In places like Tampa, which hasn't been hit by a major hurricane since 1921, this means most of the buildings have never been hurricane tested. Jacksonville is also similar, not being hit by a hurricane since the 1800s. Most people in these areas don't really know what to do when it does happen. This all spells for a disaster in the state. It cannot hurt to look up which old building survived the last big hurricane. You'd probably be safer there than in some fancy new house. Mumbai is going to flood at any moment and no one is doing anything. Mumbai, the entertainment capital of India. It is much like Los Angeles, but with more cows and somehow even less parking. And all those killer floods. As it turns out, global warming and plastic pollution also floodplain destruction are causing flooding to increase dramatically in Mumbai. By 2018, the city is going to be twice as vulnerable to catastrophic floods and could be losing billions a year in repairs and rescue. It's also going to lose a lot of human life too. A 2005 flood alone shut down the entire city and killed over a thousand people and destroyed over 14,000 homes. Even with some measures being taken, time is running out. In a few decades, 11 million people will be at risk for these floods or 1.5 trillion pounds in heartless capitalistic terms. And it's not just Mumbai either. Cities like Chennai are going to have major floods in the next several years too. Even if Indian cities are competing for the most prestigious city most likely to live out the day. The New Madrid Fault may take out 150 miles of the Midwest. Way back in 1811 and 1812, when America was still experiencing odd growth spurts, a series of over 1,000 earthquakes rocked the Mississippi River between St. Louis and Memphis. One was so powerful, it caused the river to run backwards for a few hours. Another was felt all the way on the east coast. The epicenter of the quakes was the town of New Madrid, which might as well have been renamed to New New Madrid, because it took years to rebuild it. Today though, the affected city sit peacefully on the mighty Mississippi, despite that pesky 40% chance that a New Madrid level quake could hit in the next few decades. Unlike California, 
which has been super ready since the last major earthquake hit hard enough to delay the World Series. The New Madrid Fault area has been sitting blissfully by. In case the 40% statistic didn't bother you, it really should. The New Madrid Fault has an impact zone 10 times as big than its more famous San Andreas cousin. With the right quake, structures in this area simply aren't ready for this type of action yet. Citizens from all the bordering states on the fault are totally unprepared, and their infrastructure is decades overdue for some quake proofing. Meanwhile, according to geologists at the University of Memphis, there's a lot about the New Madrid we don't know, but what we do know is very concerning. But that's what every scientist says in the first third of a disaster movie. That means we're currently right about at the part where one of the scientists looks up from their computer, removes their glasses and says, oh no. It's only a matter of time before space attacks us again. Space. It had to be the final frontier. It has to be the place where no one could hear you scream. And now that we know more about it, it's the void that's trying to murder us in increasingly horrific ways. One such way is the Kuiper Belt, the bunch of cosmetic rubbish we recently decided Pluto belonged to. If you look at these tiny bits, they all want to kill you. Inside this belt are around 100,000 50 mile wide spheres of rock ice that are ready to burst into the inner solar system to hit some planets and ours included. NASA tries to keep a solid list on what's coming right at Earth, but 100,000 at the same time could be a bit daunting. Also included in the trail mix of the damned are rogue black holes. Unlike regular black holes, which orbit about and do their own terrifying super gravity pulling thing, these black holes can get conked out of alignment and spiral out of control into the cosmos. And if one came our way, we'd only have a few decades to get off the planet, because even the black hole equivalent of a drive-by would completely mess up the Earth's orbit. That would either make the weather so different that we'd die, or Earth could be ejected out of orbit and sent into a different part of the solar system. But at least we understand those things. But when we start speaking about solar flares, we don't understand them so much. These magnetic sun ejaculations can happen at any time for no reason and can cause heaps of damage. An 1859 storm took out tons of telegraph lines, a smaller 1989 flare took out most of the power of Quebec, and a 2012 storm that barely missed us would have cost trillions in damages around the world. But those are nothing compared to super flares. These beauties can go over 20 times a normal flare, which could destroy the ozone layer and zap us. On the other hand, a lack of solar flares would kill us too. A mere 1% decrease in the sun's power could send us into another ice age, exactly like the previous 17 of the 19 times. At this point, if we get an invasion of extraterrestrial monsters, that's the universe probably showing us some mercy. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and I will catch you again next week. And if you're enjoying my weekly content, make sure you hit that subscribe button.